Hey folks, my name is Jack and I work on the Commerce Hub product team here at HubSpot. In other videos, we walk through how you can get paid using our Commerce Hub tools with our quotes tool, with payment links, or with invoices. What I want to walk you through today though is what happens after someone pays, how is this data represented within HubSpot, and then what can you actually do with this data? So to kick us off, I'm gonna click on the sales dropdown right here, payments and payments. If you are familiar with HubSpot, I'm sure this page looks pretty familiar to you as this is just an object index page. We are just creating CRM objects to represent this commerce data, folks. Clicking into a given payment object, which represents a transaction, you'll see that if you need to, you can fire full or partial refunds from the upper right-hand corner. And while receipts are always sent to your buyers automatically, if you wanted to send another receipt, you could do so from right here. What you'll see on the payment object is information about a given transaction, such as gross amount, net amount, fees, things like that. You'll also see all of the associations that again, if you've ever really spent that much time within HubSpot, I'm sure that this looks very familiar to you. The next commerce CRM object that I want to shine a spotlight on with you folks is our subscription object. This can of course be accessed from right here or clicking on sales payments and then subscriptions underneath that. This will hold different information as the subscription represents a recurring payment. Of course, you'll see the status. If a given payment fails, it's turned to unpaid. If it's expired, the subscription ran out. If it's a scheduled subscription, let's say started in 30 days, you'll see the status is scheduled. This will have information like next payment due date, start date, end date, number of expected completed payments, ARR, MRR. Now in this case, we have an open-ended subscription and it's 10 months into the subscription. And so in this case, we have one subscription record and then 10 payment records representing those transactions associated with that subscription, as well as all of the, of the other associations that I'm sure look quite familiar to you. Now we walked through invoices and how to get paid with invoices Invoices are also a CRM object as well, but from this page view, also you can click into a given invoice, and in this case, see all of these invoice properties, such as the owner, the balance due, the number, and other things like associations that again, I'm sure look familiar to you. Invoices are a bit different. If you wanted to grab this link or send it, you certainly could. You can also manually mark invoices as paid as well. So this is both a payable artifact as well as a given uh, object too. Now clicking into a given contact company or deal record, you'll see all of these commerce objects on the right sidebar as well. So you're able to zoom out and view things at a higher level on those index pages. You're also able to click into a given person and see all of that information on the right sidebar that you would need to see. Now these aren't just objects from a user interface perspective. There are also objects in the HubSpot framework that allow for you to really use the power of the entire HubSpot system. So what do I mean by that? The first and most powerful thing is going to be commerce workflows. When you go ahead and create a workflow, the first thing to keep in mind is what is the center of gravity for this given automation set? You all will notice that we have subscription-based workflows to manage your renewal management, for example. Payment-based workflows. Let's say a given payment fails and you wanted to notify someone on your team. You can certainly do so. Let's say an invoice is overdue and you wanted to redistribute that invoice or maybe send a text message to someone. If it's more than 14 days overdue, for example, you could certainly do so. This unlocks a tremendous amount of power with Commerce Hub as you're able to leverage this data alongside your customer data to really lean into the power of automation. It's not just our automation functionalities though, folks. We of course do give you some out of the box commerce reports. Check out the gross payment revenue dashboard if you haven't already. What you'll also notice is these commerce objects are going to be exposed in the custom report builder, just like everything else. So if you ever have any questions about your data, you can always visualize it and answer those questions. Finally, if you wanted to create a list off of any of your commerce data, you could certainly do so as well. I'll quickly show you all this list that I have of active subscribers where it simply uses that subscription status is active. So what you all will see are these CRM objects 
Look and feel like everything else within HubSpot. You can also capitalize on the power of HubSpot with workflows, customer reporting, and automation as well. Hope this helps.